Uh, now we'd like to uh, turn the floor over to Phil Sadler of Sadler Machine Company, who was the uh, builder of the uh, food growth chamber. And he's going to talk about uh, how we could adapt this technology to a lunar analog. Yeah. I'll take care of your slides. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Uh, I work with uh, Dr. Gene Giacomelli at the University of Arizona Control Environment Management Center, and we've been working together for a few years now. I have a long history working in Antarctica. I went down first in 1978. I have uh, 13 seasons on the ice and started the greenhouse crop program there. And, uh, so anyway, yeah, we built the, uh, the, the chamber at the, the New South Pole Station, but I had built a couple of greenhouses before that, early on. Uh, but what we want to do now is we want to talk about uh, the, uh, we're looking to develop a new analog uh, for the South Pole. Um, right now we're building the uh, new greenhouses and we're testing there at the U of A, and uh, if that works out well, then we may get a chance at uh, building a whole habitat. system is different than physical chemical system. We use plants. We're not trying to exclude the physical chemical system, um, but we want to use plants as the primary uh, uh, source of life support, the physical chemical being the, uh, um, the backup system. Redundancy is real important because uh, you have to be able to uh, have a backup. And every six months, the crew will be swapped percent of their calories will be brought on the next next uh, uh, vehicle. Okay. This is a model that's out in the lobby there, but this is a when uh, General Warden asked uh, at Ames Research Center asked us to design a, uh, a greenhouse that could uh, be deployed autonomously and be functioning by the time the crew gets there. And uh, uh, this is what we came up with because. You design a greenhouse, but it's so integrated with the rest of the station, you have to come up with a total design. So this is this is our design, and uh, it has solar concentrators on the top that use fiber optic lighting to light the greenhouses, and uh, it's meant to be buried. The the dark panels are photovoltaic uh, membrane material that folds down as curtains. Okay, light. This is basically where the greenhouses are. You have uh, a post-harvest module where all your water recycling and composting goes on, your, your, your toilet, and your uh, shower. And then the rest of it, there, there's, a, there's a galley. And uh, where's the pointer light? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, this is the, the greenhouses here. One of these is the, uh, the post-harvest module. One of these is the kitchen, then there's birthing. And these are the uh, modules for uh, the crew. This is about 18 foot diameter. Okay, next slide. This is an aerial view of the uh, concentrators with a cupola that allows the crew to look out because you'll be completely buried all the way around it. Next slide. This is the inflatable modules that uh, are housed in the lower floor of the, the, uh, the transit vehicle, and uh, this is where they've come out of. Here, can we go to the movie now? Lane, can we go to the movie? Uh, yes. We got, a, we got a video that we made with the model um, 
a stop action animation that uh, one of our students made. There we go. Oh, good. <clears throat> We got a little soundtrack that, uh... but anyway, the uh, the habitat sets down on the lunar surface. It has to uh, to lose its engine package, and then the uh, the landing legs allow it to walk away from the uh, the engine package, and uh... <laughs> no, it's important uh, to be able to, to to locate your habitat where exactly you want it. Then it drops down to the legs, and the lunar tractor is deployed. It's got to be buried, so you have to have some sort of device to bury it. The tractors run from, uh, it's uh, directed from like mission headquarters. Somebody with a virtual helmet operates the tractor. That's what I used to do in Antarctica as I was a heavy equipment operator. And uh, What's the time delay again? Is it two, a couple seconds? A couple seconds. It, it's doable. You can have some sort of combination of autonomous uh, uh, virtual control. But it's a battery power. It's electric uh, electric tractor. What about the electrostatic properties of the engine in terms of uh, affecting your operation? Couldn't tell you. The reason we're trying to promote the South Pole is that this regolith weighs, with the one sixth gravity, about one about four hundred uh, pounds per cubic yard, and that's what the snow weighs out at pole. It allows us to have a uh, environment that's frozen, extremely cold, and to bury, bury a habitat. The tractor digs a pit about half the diameter of the, uh, of the uh, modules and stockpiles the material at the end. Um, the vehicle is low. Instead of having water bringing the water to the lunar surface, it's bringing methanol. And the methanol is powering fuel cells, which provide the electricity to run the, uh, to operate the tractor and to operate the uh, hydraulics for the, uh, the walking legs. About every hour, you'll probably have to pull in and get recharged. Yeah, the carbon is saved for the uh, plants. You've got to have uh, um, CO2 for the plants. There won't be a crew there, so that'll provide that. And then the methanol will be converted to water, and it'll be stored. <laughs> the habitat walks into the, into the pit. We're not really sure at this point. We're, we're building the greenhouses and we'll be able to uh, figure it out from there. Once it gets into the pit that's been dug, then it's got to lower itself all the way down to the ground so that the uh, inflatable modules come out um, at ground level. The, the lady that uh, made this movie for us, she, uh, she has a thing called a thermon that she played. <laughs> this, it was the original, like the uh, the Forbidden Planet, the soundtrack. Right. She uh, then the tractor has to to bury the habitat. Is it possible for the tractor to puncture that thing? Yeah, it is. You got to be really careful. However, uh, we did do analysis on the load, so what if there's, what if there's regular on top? 
Is that correct, Bill? Yeah. And how, what's the diameter of the tubes there? Well, the, the pictures you'll see of the lunar greenhouse we're building right now is 88 inches. Um, what's that, 2.3 meters, 2.23? I'm not sure, Bill. Um, but it'll eventually be buried. Then the, uh, the panels, the, the nose cone flies off and the panels uh, fall off or, and uh, the solar concentrators are uh, deployed. You can see the model out in the lobby if, if it's still there. And then the tractor converts to a lunar ve exploration vehicle. After the humans arrive. Yeah, when the humans arrive, they swap it over and the tractor is no longer needed. And you said those are fiber op optic, uh, so it takes the light and channels it into a fiber optic cable and takes yeah. it, pumps it down to the. I'll show you a picture in the in a bit that uh, shows the uh, work we did for NASA on that. Okay, Lane, next slide. Very good. Oh. Talking technology? Okay, here's the uh, Slide. Let's go to the next one. This is the uh, the modules being uh, inflated and deployed. Next slide. This is what it looks like a, a side view. You've got the uh, concentrators and you've got the central hub, which is actually the the uh, transfer vehicle. And then you have these uh, the post harvest module and the greenhouse right uh, inflated from that cover. Next slide. This is a side view of the. The floor panels, the, the, the structure collapses and, and this aluminum structure uh, folds up like an accordion. And this is cable culture. This is our growing system that uh, works with the inflatable structure. Next slide. This is just uh, shows the, uh, the, what the structure, uh, what the envelope might look like. Next slide. This is how it will fold up. There, we got this model out there in the, in the lobby. You guys can take a look at that too if you're interested. But this is how this is how the panels fold up right here. The aluminum structure. Next slide. This is a couple of rings that I made of the, the folding up. This is it collapsed, and then the and then it deployed, and then it uh, unfolding. This is this side view, and that's it uh, folding or unfolding. The uh, the the envelope will be like a spacesuit with uh, many layers of different types of material and maybe even have a, a, a rigidizing membrane a honeycomb inside it to keep the rocks from eventually puncturing the, uh, the pressurized portion of it. Next slide. This is part of a NASA uh, conceptual design we're, we're funded for. And uh, this just shows the Earth and 50% of the food coming from Earth and 50% coming from the greenhouse. And then it goes in the toilet or the uh, galley waste ends up in the composter and it regenerates CO2. And, uh, and then <clears throat> the, stuff that, the stuff that is composted uh, that doesn't go, uh, doesn't, the biomass reduction is, is, is stops, then we incinerate it and haul it back to Earth. Next slide. This is a pathway for the uh, hydroponic nutrients. They're brought in with the crew. They uh, generate the, the, the biomass, the greenhouse. The crew eats it. Solid waste uh, um, and liquid waste go into the composter. And then part of it's lost through EVAs. The nitrogen and, and, and atmosphere is lost in the EVAs. But the part that's carbonized ends up being shipped back to, uh, to Earth. Uh, this is cable culture here. This is uh, it's uh, basically uh, the plants are grown in a uh, in an envelope that uh, hangs on a wire. They grow inside here, and the nutrient travels down here, and then the then they they're suspended from a wire. This is something uh, Dr. Giacomelli and I came up with. Uh, go ahead, um, and then it's suspended from both ends of the aluminum structure. Next slide, there you go. And this envelopes are left inside this, this, to grow inside the structure. Go ahead. This is the Mars greenhouse we built just to demonstrate the, uh, 
the growing system in these, uh, this system. And these plants were taking up 33 liters of water a day. So they were uh, discharging through transpiration 33 liters of water a day. So that's just an example of what, what the growing system will be like. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> here you have the envelopes, and, and uh, these are the plants growing in them. Um, no soil, uh, uh, just nutrient. Go ahead. Here's Lane here with the, uh, with the plants, the seedlings, and lettuce, and, and the crops, the tomatoes. Go ahead. We've done strawberries in these, peppers. Uh, next slide. And this, is, we grew potatoes from, uh, from seed, and uh, the people down at Tuskegee had, not with this system, but they've grown with hydroponics, they've grown sweet potatoes and peanuts and stuff, so we plan to do all these different crops in, in the, the future lunar greenhouse. Go ahead. <clears throat> this is what it's gonna look like cross-section of the, the different growing systems. It's flexible and, and we're gonna have to have about 20 different plants, uh, different crops in there. Go ahead. Here's Lane's South Pole uh, efforts. Uh, we built a chamber down there. Next slide. This is, this is South Pole. I've got a lot of time there and uh, I hope to put the analog someplace out beyond the uh, main station and uh, have uh, our students uh, winter there. Go ahead. This is uh, the, the South Pole greenhouse. I, I was responsible for the design, the fabrication of it, and uh, Gene and, and Lane did the engineering, and uh, it's been real successful. The NSF's happy with us, and we're still operating it, and we can operate it remotely from Tucson. Here's Lane with uh, some of his, Lane grew the first cantaloupes at South Pole. <laughs> Go ahead. Labor's important when you're in space. These astronauts are supposed to be doing science, not playing in the greenhouse. So I see uh, at Houston having a virtual greenhouse where uh, a, robot, a humanoid robot operates the, the lunar greenhouse. Next slide. This is Asimo, Honda's robot, and uh, we'd like to see if it could uh, operate the greenhouse uh, uh, remotely. Do you have one of those? No, we're going to borrow it, hopefully. <laughs> um, this is uh, air revitalization. You've got uh, the composter, the microbes uh, consuming oxygen, giving off CO2. Uh, the crew doing the same thing, and uh, the uh, greenhouse uh, revitalizing the atmosphere. Next slide. Um, this is the uh, uh, water cycle. Water comes from Earth, um, potable water, uh, service water goes to composter. Composter atmosphere is condensed, goes to the greenhouse, the nutrient uh, makeup water. The, the plants transpire the water almost in potable form and it starts to cycle over. Next slide. Again, here's wastewater, goes to the composter, through the condensers, gray water, uh, greenhouse, and uh, ends up cycling. Next slide. This is the composter, pretty basic. Go ahead. Uh, composter toilet, it's an aqueous uh, bioreactor and uh, it has uh, oxygen and, and nutrients supplied to it and uh, they work pretty, pretty rapidly. Next slide. This is the post-harvest module with the toilet, the shower, wastewater, bladder, composter, uh, washer and dryer. Everything is going to be accessible from the inside because once you cover the, the habitat up, it, then you won't have access to the outer membrane. So all the, all the structure on the inside has got to be able to be removed quickly and patched if there is a hole. This is the power system and uh, the uh, concentrated light gives you greenhouse lighting and then there's uh, uh, other, for other parts of the spectrum are divided or are split off and uh, then the thermal well and the flat panel radiators are used for chilling and HVAC and, and possibly the, the Stirling engine and photovoltaic cooling. This is my efforts at the uh, U of A earlier for NASA with the uh, Himawari and the dish uh, concentrators and this is our subterranean uh, growth chamber. And this is the uh, 
the concentrators will be bringing the, uh, the light in with fiber optics to the, uh, to the greenhouses. This is uh, one form, the dish concentrator. The visible spectra goes and re reflects off a dichroic mirror and the, uh, the long wave radiation uh, hits the photovoltaic panel and then it's cooled by the thermal, this is, liberates thermal energy. Next slide. This is the Fresnel type uh, concentrator, which I like the best, and uh, it, uh, it's like the Himalaya. Go ahead, next slide. It has a Fresnel lens that focuses on the focal point for the visible lights on the, on the fiber optic bundle, and then you have the, the uh, PV cells and the thermal collection. This is how it works right here. So you get light and power. Yeah, yeah. Next slide. Okay, well, I guess that's about it. Let's go ahead to the, keep going, keep going. One more. This is what we're building right now is the lunar greenhouse. And I should have it finished in about eight months and have plants in it and uh, uh, next slide. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, so have they given specs or something on what, does everything go back to the moon, nothing's left there? Yeah, we, we zero. We're looking at South Pole and that, that's a good analog for it because nothing could be left there. Uh -huh. We can't contaminate the, the South Pole. They're talking the same thing about the moon? They're yeah. They're probably gonna drill a big well and just dump it down there. No. Some people are probably, not us. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to grab the yeah. microphone, Phil. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure everybody here is just uh, is, is impressed and amazed at the ingenuity and how far ahead uh, the thinking and this, uh, this research is done. Um, the University of Luna Project, which is a, a new initiative of the Moon Society, uh, felt that this deserved uh, some special recognition. So uh, we have uh, provided uh, a significant achievement to uh, Phil and to the Controlled Environment Agricultural Center team. And so, on behalf of the Moon Society uh, and the uh, University of Arizona Controlled Environment Achievement, this is uh, a print of the University of Luna. It's the Space University, the art done by uh, the famous uh, space artist Pat Rawlings, and he has personally signed these. And so, we would like to present our sincere appreciation for all this incredible imagination, the hard work, and efforts that. Uh, has gone into this effort. So we applaud you, we admire what, uh, what you've done, and I hope everyone can, can join us in, uh, um, in recognizing this incredible work. This